A battery is connected in series with a 0.31 ohm resistor and an inductor, as shown in the figure below. The switch is closed at time equal to zero. The time constant of the circuit is 0.1 seconds, and the maximum current in the circuit is 7.9 amps. So A, find the EMF of the battery, B, find the inductance of the circuit, C, find the current in the circuit after one time constant, D, find the voltage across the resistor after one time constant, and E, find the voltage across the inductor after one time constant. So for part A, it says to find the EMF of the battery. So EMF, if we were to remove this inductor uh, and remove the resistor, or let's just say we remove the inductor, then the EMF would be equal to the current times the resistor. And without an inductor providing backwards inductance, providing basically backwards current, without that being present, our current are, would be the maximum current. So the maximum current, the maximum current is the current you would get if the inductor was not present. And so you can simply take, uh, take I max times R. And so that's what we got set up. EMF is equal to I max times R. That's Ohm's law. And then next it wants us to find the inductance of the circuit. And so the inductance, we can just, we have our time constant. So we, it gives us the, uh, it gives us the time constant and we just, uh, we, it, we, we know what the resistance is. So in order to find the inductance, we just set up the equation for the time constant and then we can solve for R. Or, I'm sorry, it's all for L, the inductance. So the inductance is equal to R times the time constant. Then the next part, it wants to know what the current would be after one time constant. So the, we set up the equation for the current at some time, and uh, that's the current at some time is going to be equal to the maximum current times 1 minus E to the negative T over tau power. But it says after one time constant. So if, if the after one time constant, the time would equal the time constant. And so we got to set those equal to each other, and then we can basically set up a ratio. So if we're finding what the negative t over tau, since t equals tau in this case, it would be basically negative tau over tau, which is equal to negative 1. Any number divided by itself is equal to 1. So that ends up reducing our equation to um, uh, I max times 1 minus e to the negative 1. And 1 minus e to the negative 1 will reduce further. If you just plug that in your calculator, you should get something like 1 minus e to the negative 1 is 0 0.632121. So the current at some time, uh, after the current after one time constant is about 63% of the maximum current. And so you just plug that, uh, basically, um, you substitute this back into the into this equation and that's what you get. Now the next thing it asks for is the voltage at some time constant. So we go back to, or after one time constant, we go back to Ohm's law and the voltage is going to equal I times R and that's, we're going to use this I right here so you could plug in this uh, and substitute but we've already calculated what this is. Uh, or you, you should have a, it's already plugged in your numbers to figure out what I is. So you just I times R, um, which could, like I said, could also be 0 0.63212 times I max times R. And then the last part it asks, it could actually be done two ways. So it asks to find the voltage across the inductor after one time constant. So we found the voltage across, we found the voltage across the resistor at some time constant and we've uh, so and we also know what the EMF is and so you could set up the equation where um, where the the change in voltage across the inductor is equal to the voltage uh, is equal to the EMF voltage minus or plus the induced voltage so what an inductor does is it actually puts voltage into a circuit and so what direction it does that is another question but Here's my inductor, and suppose that I have a voltage here, and I go to this inductor, and it's going to put more voltage in there, so the voltage that goes across it should be the sum of the two. Now here's the thing, the inductor puts in a negative voltage, so it's really going to be this uh, EMF minus some 
induced voltage, but we have to put plus, and then we have to figure out what the induced voltage is, which will be a negative number. So the induced voltage is equal to negative of the inductance uh, divide, uh, times the change of current over the change of time. Now the change of current, we, we know that it started at zero, and then it went up to uh, whatever we calculated for 63% of I max. So you just plug in that number, and the time that it took is one time constant. And we know what the, the problem gives us what the time constant is. In my uh, problem, it says it's 0.1. Now, the, the other way to do that is to use the Kirchhoff's loop rule, uh, which is uh, just as easy. Um, but to, finishing this up, solving this EMF minus, so in, whenever I add the induced current, I'm actually subtracting L times change of I over change of T. So you get a minus here. But the other way is to use Kirchhoff's loop rule. And uh, basically, I get um, the, the loop rule is that the sum of the changes of voltage have to equal zero. And so let me go ahead and pull this all the way up. Um, and that, that would basically mean that the EMF, I start right here, I go across the EMF, it increases by the EMF. Then I go through the inductance, it decreases by the amount of the inductance. We'll call it delta V. It decreases by that amount. Then I go across the resistor and it decreases by IR. So I have EMF minus IR minus delta V. I could put delta V with a subscript L to show that as the change of voltage across the inductor is going to equal zero. And then I just solve for delta V EMF minus IR. You should get the same answer that you got from, from using this equation right here. Now supposing that you're wanting to check yourself um, I'll go ahead and show you the numbers that I got, and you can see whether or not you're plugging stuff in the calculator correctly. So for part A, I got 2.449 volts. For part B, I got 31 millihenries. For part C, 4.993752 amps. For part D, 1.548063 volts and part E 0 0.900937 volts. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the about section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.